Every night, Betty returned for her dinner. She was not satisfied without a dessert of marshmallows and cookies. Kershaw never got used to her, but Sheila did. They would calmly sniff at each other through the screen door. Yet, when Betty tried to push open the door and share Sheila's supper, Sheila thought that friendship had gone too far. Crunch, smack, gulp, gulp, open up the door. Even though you fed me, I should like some more. Don't be stingy, only twenty-four. Just another cookie, please, like the one before. For three weeks, Betty watched me cautiously. When she was convinced she could trust me, she appeared one evening with four children. Sheila Kershaw and I watched in utter delight as Betty and her family, spotlessly clean and glistening, stood on their hind legs and waited patiently for their dinner. After a while, Betty allowed me to feed her by hand. I was told not to do this with a wild raccoon because they have very sharp claws. Nevertheless, I sensed it would be all right, and Betty on her part was careful not to hurt me. Sometimes while eating, she would gently hold my hand with the velvety part of her paw. Small wonder that I soon trained her to take marshmallows from my mouth without ever touching me. September came far too quickly and it was time to return to the city. I comforted myself with the knowledge that raccoons take good care of themselves. Did you know that they sleep almost the entire winter? On my last evening in Maine, I gave Betty and her family a farewell party. They shared one half of a Betty Crocker cake, icing and all, peanut butter, bread, and marshmallows. Betty looked at me sadly, as though she knew she would not see me for a long time. I have to go, I explained. Someone must earn money to keep you supplied with marshmallows. I'll think of you often. Farewell, Betty. Farewell, children. Farewell. Farewell.